Hi guys and welcome to Angling For You and today you join me in the back garden for a little bit of something that you've all asked me for for years and years and years and I've never got round to it. It's not the kind of group that I do um, to do match fishing that much but that's what we're going to be doing. So I am fishing the Members Day match tomorrow um, at Tom's Pond in Otley. So today what we're going to do is go through my match setup. So what what am I doing preparation wise to fish tomorrow? Um, so what are the tactics am I going to be fishing? How am I going to prepare that at home in readiness for, for fishing this match? Now we'll start outside. There's high probability. I'm looking there's clouds over but over it may rain. Um, so I might I might might jump to inside when it comes to rigs and things like that. So um, briefly I'm going to talk you through what I'm going to go with in my match and we'll talk about these when we go into the different bits of what we're putting together. It's not given great weather which is typical um, for our members day matches to be honest. Um, Tom's Pond is not a, a £200 venue, it, um, it's full of mixed bag so there's carp and all sorts of different silverfish and the is tr the odd trout through this time or they will be taking them out soon so it, it could be a mixed bag personally i think it'd be run with one with 40 pound around that but that might be a lot of fish it just might be smaller fish um so the way i'm going today i'm not going to complicate anything i am going chop worm castor and hemp that's dead simple i'm going to go all natural as it's a sort of natural venue um i'm going to take some corn just in case for down the edge because sometimes you can get the odd carp um around three to five pound down the edge but what i'm going to be my main attack is going to be fishing a track line and across and i've only got 10.2 meters I've, I've pulled peg nine on on pool one um i'm do i have not fit that pe peg bits on the corner so it may be just able to reach the island it may be too far um, but we'll be fishing on the deck, um, but we'll have an, having a strung out bulk, which we'll talk about when we when we go to the rigs um, to get that slow fall and potentially get them up in the water um, and feeding. There's a lot of hide in there and a lot of good roach as well. So that's my my game plan is to cad put in. I'll, I'll put one pot in to start with, um, and then I'll cad put in a mixture of chop worm, uh, castor, and a little bit of hemp seed. Um, if, if I feel it's necessary, I'm going to mix up literally 500 gram to a kilo of an overwetted uh, Boland's ground bait to feed with it. Um, and fingers crossed that'll do a steady business. I mean, I'm, I'm just be happy to get out and catch fish, to be honest. Um, I am going to try my damnedest by hook or by crook to get it filmed the last two times i want to film them obviously ironically i did well over 100 pound on the, one of the last ones um i just couldn't fi film it i've got a, the camera's 800 quid i just didn't want it out in rain even under an umbrella it was blowing around it was windy it was rainy fingers crossed we can get it under the umbrella tomorrow and following this we'll have the actual match the way in and the results of how we did fingers crossed it'll be okay so what I'm going to do is jump on to the first part and we'll go a little bit around looking at what we're going to fish with and how we're going to fish with it and how we're going to set it up. So the first one is going to be is my one of my little rods, um, my end zone Z, and we're going to set that up just to fish a little bit of cage feeder fishing and uh, we'll go in a little bit of how we're going to do that, what's the hook links and all that kind of bits and bobs and uh, fingers crossed um, it'll give you a little bit of information. Right boys, so we sat here with, you can see the end zone Z just behind me and the rig luckily I've had on is a stem. So there's a stem on there with a little look link on there um, which we don't need so I'm going to take that off before we do anything. Just release that up link. There we go. So what we're doing with this one is we're going to put on a cage it's only a small cage a quick release cage and that's what we're going to we're going to fish with effectively we want that to be um nice and simple um easy to get on and uh, don't put too much feed in it that's that's the whole idea for me um so if i've got an island peg that is just out of reach or out of reach 
then this is where this potentially could uh, come into action um, feeding exactly the same way but um, but utilizing it for for this so what I'm doing is I'm sliding on that onto that stem so this is the good thing about the ICM uh, feeders um, or the ICS feeders you can slide them on and off um, and there we've got a completely new rig um, which is is perfect for me um, now people always say um, you don't need a big stem you don't need this I, 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 I know normally big stems for distance but I got like quite a lot of bushes and precarious things around I think on this peg and I like to get a little bit of control so and I've said this in another video you'll see when I fished um, a similar feeder at uh, but it were, it were a flatbed but it was a similar long stem at Rustics that time when I'm flicking under the trees and and through towards this island with the overcut when you you do with the longer stems you can twitch them a little bit and I can sort of guide them in it's just something I've developed just my technique of bringing them in and I find it useful so I've got five pound Maxima uh, line uh, which is what I'm fishing on most reels now apart from um, the bigger ones for, for for sort of big long distance casting so I've done a video on these but it may not be up before you see this um, and these are the MC the MXC matrix hook links um, these are pole rig ones because um, they're only 3.2 um, pound uh, to an 18 but I am actually going to use one for this and the reason being is that I'm only after silver fish when we're fishing on these so I, I do want quite a, a thin light line when we're fishing and I want it a little bit longer um, of around six inches I don't want it too long but I also don't want it too uh, too short so really easy to get those off actually um, and we'll just have a little look you can see nice monofilament line um, nice and stiff uh, which is really good um, and just nice and simple uh, rig we don't, don't have to mess about just gonna put that on make sure that it's pushed in keeping it tight and then it'll sit nice and perfect so we've got the hook there and we've got the cage there now in transit and when i put it onto my rod to put away i will actually take off this feeder because you don't want extra weight just keep the stems on it takes two seconds so there you go that that that's takes two seconds to take it on and off um you don't need to to have it on it's it's really simple you've got the rig done and dusted you've done all the hard work with tying tying it on you just want the stem uh, and the weight you can just add it's just something else that's pulling on the tip of your rod which you don't want so that just sits now as as a hook link and a rod and what i'm going to do is just go through how i break it down now <clears throat> you might say that i've got um certain pole so uh, sort of tip socks and things like that where some people do have those um to put over the top uh, tips of the the pot of the rod uh, to keep them safe I know Dave Wood at uh, Bag Up TV did a review on those um, not long ago, um, and they are really useful. I'll be honest, I, I don't use them. I, I tend to just gently put them in, in my bag, and I've been doing it for years. I've never, ever had a problem, he says. Um, but we'll just show you through how I sort of close my rod down in this scenario. So just gently pull this rod over towards me here we go so when you when you're doing it it does help if you have a, a little bit of a hook holder which on the Z's the uh, end zone Z's you do have so it um, makes it a lot easier to, to just sort of get something to keep hold of your hook so uh, what I tend to do first before I do anything else is hook on that first and then I just gent gently wind until it's the lines taut so you can see the lines taut there the handles already unclipped um, nice and soft and then I'm just gonna gently work off this section 
give myself a little bit of line and then when I've done that I'm just gonna gently lay that that section down and what I'm gonna do is point this part what I've uh, of this part that I've pulled off to the butt section that it's just come out of while I tighten it up and um, but the other thing to be careful is um, just this dangling line that's hooked on here what I tend to do is just trap that with my finger because if you don't what tends to happen is you can uh, loop it over the line when you're reeling it when you're reeling it in and you don't need that that hassle so I've got that now nice in front of me just gently lay that down to the side I've got that that line I'm just going to tighten it up and what, I'm, what I'm wanting really is I don't want too I want enough tension on but not too much tension I'm just going to nip that up back on I want it side by side like that and this is where you can fasten it together with your socks or anything like that. I don't need to because it's going to go in the in the thing that the, the butt of the rod goes in first with butt of the rod will go in. Just gonna lift this up and onto the table. So if you haven't got one of these and you you wanting to do match fishing or you any fishing really it makes sense to get them um it just it just helps with you know just every, every bit of carrying it around you're not messing about um getting it done every time so i slide that in nice and gentle that sits in a comfy pouch at the bottom it's nice and safe i can pull that down like that to, to grip it the rod the reel sits nice down there the rod has got holders so it's not going to rattle around with the sections one and two it might not be able to see the second one but same as the first one that goes down the rods nice and secure in there <coughs> along with my other rod which I, I don't need for tomorrow it's my uh, map rod don't need that one for tomorrow and that there is my real rod and and line ready to go so that's not my main part of attack the fastest will be to use the pole um it'll be quicker to get in and out uh, we're going to move on to that next and we're going to have a look at some rigs uh, that we're going to they're going to tie for it um, and basically we're, we're just going to get that ready to be put away and just ready to fish i've got um my box tackle box i'll bring over here and we'll have a look at the the floats and things that we're going to use and uh, yeah make it nice and simple for you and hopefully give you something to look at for when you uh, you next go out so let's jump onto that and see how it is right guys so we've got a couple of select rigs uh, that i'm going to tie up today now people do give me a little bit of a ass all over not tying so many rigs but i have got some rigs tied up um, but I'm not one of those that just likes to tie loads and loads of rigs up um, so I'm going to tie two up um, my thought process tomorrow is I'm going to have a, an, a carbon slim uh, which I, I love these floats um, I'm going to have a carbon slim and I'm going to go with the 0.4 gram and they're really delicate and you know these bites will be quick they'll be delicate bites um, and that's, that, that's what I'm going to be, be utilising and I reckon it'll be sort of three and a half to four foot of water with a spread out bulk. But because we're going to be feeding with a little cad pot as we go, um, there's a good chance that the, f the fish might come up in the water. We get takes wherever mid depth and things like that. So what I'm going to do is, is put a muddy holes float together, which is just one of the small ones with a glass stem. And again, a short little bristle, a 0.4, so I can still have a strung out bulk but it allows me to fish a little bit shallower and I'm only going to set that at around two foot um, and that will be used purely for, for that. There, there is, sorry, there will be three, um, which I, I, I may show you or may not, um, and we'll set up a little edge um, rig as well, just in case, because we always need an edge rig. Um, and 
I'm going to go with these um, MT MXC hook links again and you know you need to be light for, especially for these smaller fish what I've found at Tom's over the years is that, that certainly the winter or into sp early spring they are quite delicate and the, if you start putting anything sort of sizable on hook or, hook or line wise you don't always get the bite so my plan is to tie them up quite light and fingers crossed they'll do the business so before we do anything else um, what I'm going to do is get these out and I'm going to just show you them up close but then I'm going to do all the things like putting the rubbers on and all sorts of stuff like that um, I'm going to do that off camera because it's a, a quite a lengthy process and it's going to end up being a really super long video um, but the flow itself see it's got a nice slim slim profile and you know with a point four um it allowed me to shot that uh, that pull that shot out um with number tens and just have that nice slow fall is which is what we need um so i'm going to crack on with this and i'll join it within a couple of minutes when we've got the uh, the little bits of rubber on and uh, we're we're more in front Right guys, so we've got the uh, the first float um, threaded on, the carbon slim, and we're just going to lift it up closely, just a little bit of something that I do on the like longer stemmed floats. Um, some of you may do it already, some of you may not, and just a little bit of a do's and don'ts really. Um, but I'll put that up nice and close to the camera, we can have a little, a little look, just pull a bit, a bit extra line off. So, hopefully you get a a little bit of a thought process but there's one rubber there just against the the body of the float then there's another rubber there and another rubber at the bottom and you can see there's a little bit of an overhang and that stops it wrapping round or anything like that and it's really important that you have those three rubbers on a longer stem some people even do four rubbers um i i go with three um and s some floats with a mud muddy holes one for example it's a little bit shorter you could get away with two but i always have that little overhanging you want to make sure that that rubber is as tight as you can get it on there without it being impossible to move um because you need it to stay in place you don't want it to be sliding up and down and onto your line and you do see that with some ready-made rigs and things like that um that's no good you don't need any you, you don't need that the second thing is don't go ridiculously tons of line for wastage but go slightly longer than you think because when you get there you need a little little bit of line to work with when you're plumbing up and there's no worse than tying a perfect rig and it being too short and um, that's not that's not what you need so always give yourself a little bit of line to work with now i know from fishing toms quite frequently throughout the years it's around the three and a half uh, foot mark um, towards the island up to two and a half foot and um, so i'm going to give myself around the, the four foot um, and that'll just give me a little bit of line to work with um, and i uh, i'm going to tie a little just small loop in this end and then i can connect my uh, loop to loop for my hook links and again one small advantage of having hook links are all the same size is that if you do ping one off at least you know that you can just replace it and it's going to be the same depth um, that is good when you fish in a place like Tom's because there's trout in there and they do have they do have teeth. And sometimes sometimes you can go for a whole session um, when you catch them and not lose one up link, uh, but then you can go others and lose four or five. Um, usually in the net, to be honest, um, and they they end up pinging off. But nice little. Uh, loop on it and what i'm going to do now is just pull those that little bit, bit of extra line so what i tend to do is just roll it around your fingers and just against your thumb and just gently pull you don't want to pull too much you don't want friction burn on it and just nice and steady pressure you don't want to be snapping your line when you've just put it on there and then just run your hand through the line just loosen it up and you've got that nice bit of space now when I, when I put the shots on, 
I don't, again, don't put them right underneath the float. I, I spread them out a bit, but I allow myself to then be able to move it higher up and slide them up the line when I get to the peg. Um, so I am going to be using number 10s. Um, I'm going to be using number 10 slots uh, from Progen. Um, they're my go-to. Um, they're in two. I've got them in two different styles. I've got a 10. Ooh, get it out. So we've got two 10s. Uh, I've got two 8s, two 9s. Um, and I'm going to just take the lids off and I'll show you up close. So there's two types. One's a khaki green, which is this one. And then the other one's like a steel grey, normal shot. Now, um, it's it, it's completely up to you. Um, it just varies if you want to. You've got different coloured waters. Um, I'm, I'm just going to put the silver ones on. Like I said, it don't, doesn't really matter. Uh, this is a number four float, so I won't I won't put all the shot that's needed on here. I'll, I'll do that when I get to the pond itself. And I, I'll put a bit of shot on now to create the pattern that I want. And then when I get out there, I'll fine tune it. And and just to start off with, I'm just going to put around four or five inches between each shot down to the down to the hook link knot uh, to the loop. And I just. Uh, gives me that nice natural fall of what I want um, and I will put a back shot as well because every time if it's a Tom's there's some sort of wind it maybe not be terrible but it just allows me to keep a lot of the tension on the on the line what and let that arc fall through the water it falls nicely in the arc and you're continuously keeping weight to it and allows you to then hit those bikes if it goes um, if they hit it halfway down you'll see it you'll see a touch on it if you if you let it, let it go down with no slack with just slack on it you'll miss those bikes through the water and that might be those bikes might be indicating to you that the fish are in a different level of water and then you'll miss seeing the early signs of that and potentially miss out on fish so It'd probably take around six number 10s I'm going to put on it for now. And I'll put one three inches away from the hook as well, like I always do. I always like a little bit of weight near the hook uh, to, stri to strike on. Um, and all you can see, I'm just wetting my finger. That just allows the uh, shot to stick to my finger um, so that I can roll it in and put it on the line easier as they are small shots and some people use tweezers for this um, personally I just nibble them on um, but each to their own whatever you find comfortable just make sure you keep the line taut when you do it and it will make your life easier sorry it sounds a bit like a racetrack behind me people do motor up and down this road Um, but now so now we've got through that main part of line and um, we've got I know it's gonna be difficult to see on camera but we've got one two three four five six seven number uh, tens which it won't be enough to cut to fully clock, cock the float um, but it won't be far off uh, and that will allow us tomorrow just to to fine-tune it and just see where we are uh, with that, I'm just going to nick one of these uh, hook links on and that'll finish off the first hook link that we need for today, the first uh, rig for today. And it is rewarding uh, making your own. I would highly recommend that you do that and not buy them. Um, I know that some people can't make them, it may be to do with eyesight or anything like that, um, and I understand that. Um, but if you're able to make them the satisfaction of catching fish on your own hook your own rig is so much more more satisfying than than on a bought rig and not only that is you know exactly the braking strains the points of weakness 
you've tied the knots, you know what kind of knots they are, um, and you've only yourself to blame, uh, pretty much if anything goes wrong. Um, so, yeah, it's got the hook on there, oh, there we go, and I'll put a dropper on that tomorrow. Right, let's have a look. So, we've got around two and a half to three foot there, um, and then I'm just going to put a little couple uh, behind it, and then it'll be good to go. So, what I'll do is I'll, I'll zoom you up to the, the fact of doing the other one, and we'll be able to see what that looks like, and we should be good to go. Right, guys, so the next one, just going to pull a little bit of line off, um, is one of those muddy hole ones with a glass stem um, and these ones what I'm going to do is have this um, a little bit shallower um, and probably for the edge line which will be shallower but potentially to fish slightly up in the water and the difference is I'm going to make it about three foot long I've got some number eight shots um, and what I'm pretending to do with this one is bulk these more underneath the float um, I'll go for probably three or so under the flow and then tomorrow I may put one just above the hook link and one just above uh, the hook and it'll, it'll have a natural fall then um, and it'll uh, it'll be yeah it'll be killer very uh, slip in my fingers trying to get a little bit of grip on there That typical bit more of a mess about than the actual small shots. There we go. That's the first one. Yeah, the only thing annoying in it when they'll fly coming back and they try to get into your ears. Why do they want to get in your ears? I don't know. But it's really annoying. So that's two. So like I said, I'm gonna put four on now to start off with. In fact, I'm going to put three on now, and then we'll sort the, the rest on the bank. Better to go under, and then you can dial that down when you get there. And, you know, we, we, we when we do as members matches, we're quite uh, generous. We give people near as makes no difference two hours, which seems a long time. But when you've got people that don't necessarily fish matches all the time, it's all about allowing them that time to get ready. There's, we've got people of different ages, different abilities. Um, some, sometimes people with um, disabilities that take a little bit longer uh, to get to the pegs and things like that. And we want to give everybody a fair chance. So we tend to do two hours, which is more than enough time for us to uh, get tackled up if we're, if we're helping other people out. Now, what I um, what I sort of want from tomorrow is to, to just have the a few simple pole rigs um, set up to fish the style. I'm not going to. It's not summer where there's potentially di lots of different methods that'll catch. Um, it's still going to be and it's going to be cold tomorrow. Um, it's just going to be about getting a little bit of rhythm and hopefully keeping them there um, and just getting the silvers going and, and I'm happy to for a day like that if I have a day where I catch steady all day uh, then that I'm, I'm happy happy days I'm, it's not all about about the winning uh, for me it's uh, this is why we do the members days to get people into uh, into match fishing uh, without any pressure and then they can go hopefully and, and experience it other places and get into it without feeling pressured of money and things like that um, and we all love the, the the money fishing but you know if you're just starting out and you, you don't want to spend uh, the pegging fee plus 20 quid on pools if you know you're going to lose because you, you you don't fish matches very often then this is what we we started ours for uh, members wise and it's gone from strength to strength. We've got one at Lindholm coming up as well. Um, I, th I don't know if there's any more places to go. I think there's maybe 50 or 60 people booked on that one. So it's going to be it's going to be a good one, is that one? 
by far uh, the most popular one we'll have done um, and they're selling out pretty quick now so when we do put one up on the group you have to be on it uh, because <laughs> they do sell out pretty quick so what I'm doing is just getting these on here and then I'm gonna show you an essential bit of kit in your in your armory a sharpie now sharpies not only are good for colouring out floats if you're getting a, a, a bright light and you need to make them black um, they're great for just putting what you know what you're doing uh, on the side of this so I'm just gonna put Tom's Pond shallow slash edge and then I know when I'm setting up tomorrow what that for and, and then I'm gonna put main chop worm toms on there and then I know tomorrow that when I go to pick those up I can look at the side and uh, they're uh, they're all ready to go um, another couple of bits of vital uh, bits that you'll that you'll need uh, are these kind of things little cad pots this will be essential for me tomorrow I'll be using this one which is a, a midi tower pot and um, they're really essential for for the feed part of it and obviously cad pot in and over the top of where your bait is so really really important what we'll do um, now is we've had a look at um, we've done this we'll have a look at the sort of bait bag uh, and then after that we'll have a look at the accessory bag and we'll then we'll jump lastly onto the pole and pole and nets actually pole and nets and, and, and it may seem like a bit of a pedantic video this but I'm trying to go through a whole setup of what you should look for when when going into your matches and all the different sort of processes to go through so let's jump into that next bit and uh, see how we get on right boys so just a quick one again with your bits and bobs all my uh, stuff are in here ready to go so really good to just go through your box make sure your bag make sure you've got everything that you need um, like I said got a bit of ground bait in here got my corn pellets are underneath in my uh, EVA um, and I've got my bait in a bag ready to go with all my maggots and my casters and all that kind of stuff I don't really need anything else this has just got me tubs and things to go on the sides got a few extra ground baits if there's an emergency pace situation we get a bit of weather which I doubt um, got all my towels and everything that I need in here so get in my front pockets you got your towel got us, rig boxes are in there they got a uh, cat is in there if we needed it for some reason and there's some scales in the bottom just what I carry there just in case you manage to walk yourself a PB every so often um, but yeah so nice and simple that's my bait bag that's got uh, my bait and my uh, bits and bobs that I'll need nice and easy all in one one bag I don't need any more than that and uh, it's just everything together and this is what I meant by condensing my stuff down when I talked in the videos in the early second lockdown about getting this system that's got every my bait and my accessories uh, and then I've only got my uh, net carry bag which will have all that kind of bits in so we'll move um, on to the next bit which will just be looking at my accessory bag and make sure that I've got all the things that we need for that um, all together and ready to go um, and see how we get on with that okay guys so uh, this is not going to be getting everything out of my bag but it's going to be a quick little look at what do we need just to make sure that we've got everything that we that we need for tomorrow so pole socks and a bar for it to go on to that's all there i've got my camera tripod i've got one of my uh, little uh, pole cup pots um for my cupping kit there's two more in my other one and i've got my main big double roller so they're good to go that's all what I need in that side my main camera tripod is attached to this camera that you're on currently so that will be placed into the car so this side is the one with all the bits in so for my top kits my umbrella which I think we'll need tomorrow is here the legs for my side tray my other roller my other arm a little bit of a holder for my feeders if I needed it um, and my pole hook for my uh, landing net handle and then underneath here is a piece of rubbish but also my bits for my feeder arm uh, which I will need and I'm going to take that out because it's broken and I was hoping that there were an handle on it because I dropped in my other one into the water 
like an absolute special speciale I did the other week and uh, but I can knit one off there so that should come off perfectly and fit on my side tray that I lost so that is perfect good to go and um, we're gonna put that back in there um, but, and but and these things you know you put you put your stuff away um, and it should be where you left it but it's always a good idea to double check because it may jog your memory to something else that you need to remember and I say this because on a pleasure session it, it, it can it can be annoying but it's not in the world but if you you want to match and there's something specific that you need and you ain't got it and you could have checked it and you ain't got it and it's even more annoying so let's just lift this to the side out of the way get this bag right right so the other things the big boys and this is one of the things that if you fish pleasure fishing that you can get so wrong and you're so in the pooper if you don't get it right and that's remembering your keep nets because it's something obviously you don't do day to day so as you know i have my little net bag and that's got about 10 nets in there um, and sometimes i carry a single uh, keep net in there if i'm filming and the venue allows me to use them this bad boy here my garbolino one is what's got all my match keep nets in and um, so there's four keep nets in there um, that i use um, i use the midi one which you've seen which i do most of my filming with because it's quick and compact and then the main big keep nets i have uh, are the garbolino carp ones um, nice and easy really strong um, and I, I i get on really well with them got a really good deal for three of them um, then I got a good deal on the bag and again like I say EVA stink bag absolutely essential when you're using any keep nets um, because you can just tip them out when you get back home and uh, you, you're not going to get it all over your car which is certainly not something I want to be doing so that's done so really important you that you remember those keep nets because you, you won't be first and certainly uh, won't be the last that's uh, got there and forgotten the keep nets because they don't fish matches very often so the last piece that we need to the, the the puzzle is getting hold of the pole so we've got gone through everything we've gone through the rods we've gone through terminal tackle and rigs and we've set set the rods up as well um we'll have a little talk on bait um we've gone through the bait bag and all that kind of bits um, we've gone through the nets we've gone through as as uh, carry tackle and the last thing we need to do is just make sure we've got everything with this pole we've got us uh, landing net in there um, and also the umbrella i'm going to take because of the weather for filming um, i always have two uh, landing nets i've got two one sits in here which is uh, my Daiwa Arity. so if i'm fishing for bigger carp um, i have my Daiwa Arity in there and if I'm fishing, most match fishing, um, I will have my MAP 1001, which sits in with my pole. So I, I can't forget, if, as long as I carry one of those, I'm always gonna have a, a landing net handle with me. Um, so, you know, you can't go too wrong there. But let's jump onto the pole. Let's just give it a double check over, make sure all the top kits are fine, the elastics are fine, and uh, ready to go. Right, guys, I'm gonna be quick because this <laughs> rain is coming um, and I don't wanna get caught out. So just a quick run through the bait. Um, Dendrobinas, um, nice little uh, bag of those bad boys. Uh, I'm gonna be, like I say, chop worm and caster. They'll be spot on. There's uh, half a kilo there. Um, nice big box, two pints of maggots. And what I tend to do with these is just leave them underneath the car overnight, just under the boot um, of the car, just to, to keep cool. And then in the morning, I can put them straight into the car. And then a couple of pints of casters. Really nice and simple. I've got, like I said, I've got a tin of corn and a tin of hemp in my bag, uh, along with a little bit of ground bait. So uh, I feel I'm, I'm good to go. So just gonna have a little look through um, my pole. So this is just a little bit of a habit you should maybe get into um, because when you pack up, you don't always tend to look at it. So in there, obviously, firstly, that's the competition 1001 handle. I've got my two sections of pole there. That's not the problem. What I wanna do is just double check my elastics. Um, there's no strain marks there. You know, the DAC runs are all fine. The elastics flowing, flowing nicely. Both of them are absolutely perfect. Um, and then I've got a couple of sections down here. And um, this is one section that I'll be using tomorrow. Um, and you can see elastics nice, DAC runs perfect. 
no marks under there we've got one more section to try not you there you are and again dacron perfect no no tears in the elastic nice and flowing perfect everything's in there nice and compact nice and together i'm happy with that and we're good to go guys so that is all my tackle so it is it's quite a lot when you get it all out um i've also got a bait bucket um just out of shot which you'll see me use many times uh, with a riddle just in case i need any ground bait i will also have my filming bag with the filming stuff which i'll put into the car along with all this tomorrow morning um just before we set off um so yeah it's uh, it's a lot of gear but i think i'm parked next to my peg so i'm not going to put in a trolley tomorrow and um, which will make things a little bit easier um i tend to if it's chucking it down if i can park close to the car i tend to set everything up out the car um so then i can keep everything else dry it just no one likes putting <laughs> wet stuff away um but obviously the things and bobs are going to get wet i've got the the old brolly with me not for me um i might add i can't get on my brollies when i'm fishing but for the uh, for the camera so i'm going to try and sit the, the camera underneath just so i can get some footage i'm desperate to get some match footage no matter how we do um it's going to be hard tomorrow um there's quite a few of us on over both ponds i think there's over 20 of us um but it's going to be a cold snap and if there's any little uh, snow drizzles tomorrow and, and and rain i just hope that we get we don't get that i can cope with overcast i just hope it's not too windy and not too wet i can do with the odd shower but uh, i just hope it doesn't pour it down but you know that's fishing um and it's been nice to out to be out so i thought i'd run through this little setup i know it's been quite a lengthy video but a lot of people ask um about match preparation and you know we've gone into different areas and different things that we think about and this is obviously for the people that are more new to match fishing it's not it's not going to be for you veterans that, that do it week in week out um it's just giving people a little bit of a thought around what they should check and what they should remember before getting to go on your matches um so thank you very much for watching if you uh, enjoyed this video please give it a like and, and subscribe share with your friends if you want to join us on the facebook group there's about six thousand members on there now if you want to ask questions or you want to join any of us other member days out or you'd like uh, to just post what you're doing and where you're catching feel free and if you want to join us on the instagram angling underscore for you and that is photos see what we're up to um and, and just happy to uh, for you to tag us in and things like that to see what you're doing um if you want to see any other different content we've got uh, videos on unboxings reviews and baits and equipment and challenge videos and feature videos and back to basics videos there's loads of different different playlists all with different types of fishing uh, to suit what you like really um so do check those out and uh, until the next one guys thank you very much for watching wish me luck for tomorrow and tight lines <laughs>